looking at the offense of my lord quote unquote adultery in the context of marriage preserving marriage as a social institution that was the object and the object as one of the learned judges also observes was to uh, control the sexuality of the wife in order to preserve the purity of the bloodline that was this can impact the operational efficiency and readiness of our armed forces because this has not been seen at all in that context and that is what we are concerned with very simply operational efficiency which has a direct nexus with the security of the forces the security of the nation we have gone against women officers as well and my lord now it's a changed situation we are going to have many more women in the armed forces that that's a reality and both men and women will have to acclimatize themselves to this new reality so sort of this so are... in a nutshell what we find because they are not the only ones there are yeah. lots a spate of cases which have arisen over a period of time and this judgment is from 2018 where lots we find routinely first of all lots there has been a huge rise in these cases which has come to the fore that those are my instructions to lots and we have given by way of illustration also where what has happened is that as a defense whenever there is a if they are charge sheeted say under section 45 or 63 which are now according to us very much available to us and flexible enough to take care of such uh, uh, offenses when they are being met with these charges what they are saying is that joseph shine strikes down section 497 it is no longer on the statute book and now you cannot do indirectly what you cannot do directly. That is, in short, my lords, what I find routinely as a defense which has been taken in several of these matters. In the, uh, so, 497 is gone and it's decriminalized, and therefore, even for the purposes of the armed forces, you cannot recriminalize or indirectly punish such conduct. Now, what I need to show to your lordships that insofar as the armed forces are concerned, one, I will, I'll, my lord, I'll, I'll, I'll proceed in, in, uh, in your own way. I don't uh, yes. let us, let's not give so, Very well, very well. I will do that because I need to show the entire context because what, my lord, 497 in a nutshell looked at was a very peculiarly structured provision. It was archaic, all of that, but it was looking at the offense of my lord quote unquote adultery in the context of marriage preserving marriage as a social institution that was the object and the object as one of the learned judges also observes was to uh, control the sexuality of the wife in order to preserve the purity of the bloodline that was my lord that archaic approach to uh, uh, um, uh, to controlling my lords the wife and therefore, my lords, this was found to be manifestly arbitrary, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and it was struck down. But, my lords, we are on a very different note. We are not so much, my lords, on the institution of marriage per se, as much as, my lord, as the armed forces who are responsible for the security of the nation. We want to show your lordships how this can impact the operational efficiency and readiness of our armed forces. Because this has not been seen at all in that context. And that is what we are concerned with very simply operational efficiency, which has a direct nexus with the security of the forces, the security of the nation. So, my lords, it, it may, because I, uh, when I look at some of the defenses which have been raised, my lord, it appears to trivialize the issue. We are not here to impose some kind of Victorian morality on anybody. That is not the, 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 that is not the purpose and therefore, my lord, I need to articulate how we are going about this. So, my lord, that is the order of reference. Let me just clarify one thing at the very outset mm -hmm. that when we use the word adulterous in this uh, prayer, my lords, what we mean, my lords, in, in a more in a looser dictionary sense, we are using the word adulterous. We are not using it in the sense of 497, which had a very peculiar structure to it, which I will also point out. And when we use the word promiscuous, we mean, my lord, again, in the dictionary sense, licentious, 
adulteress is of course my lord's uh, um, extramarital affair should be enough to take care of the meaning of adulteress for our purpose. And my lords, the expression uh, requirements of discipline and proper discharge of their duty is also what falls from Article 33, which I will, uh, my lords, my lords, before I take your lordships to Joseph Shine and explain that context, may I quickly, my lords, take your lordships at least illustratively through one of the acts, the Army Act, I'll take your lordships, the provisions in the others are similar, um, to show your lordships. <coughs> Well, let's please take the Army Act. Is it your uh, attempt to show that uh, though for Section 497 is uh, discriminatory towards women? Yes. This particular section, there is no such discrimination. Absolutely. Well, Lord, and in so far as you are uh, absolutely, well, Lord, in so far as we are concerned, there is absolutely, well, Lord, we are looking at it as gender <laughs> neutral, and there are cases where we have that gone that from your uh, pleadings. It is. Yes, we have gone against women officers as well. And my lords, now it's a changed situation. We are going to have many more women in the armed forces. That's a reality. And both men and women will have to acclimatize themselves to this new reality. So that's also an important reason why this clarification is required. Now, these are new developments. We have to acclimatize ourselves. This is we are a lot totally gender neutral. We'll show why 497 was struck down. Yeah. Lord, may I first take your lordships to section 69 because this was mm -hmm. earlier, my lords. The course of con uh, the, the course that was being followed was under 69 and civil offenses when 497 was still on the statute book. Why you correlate your provisions in the arms? The Army Act or the Navy Act is 497. Well, Unbecoming of an office on moral grounds is in itself sufficient. You're not supposed to. Absolutely. Criminality is something different. No, my lord, that is also, my lord, for unbecoming conduct, of course, you can be cashiered. You can be cashiered. For, my lord, acting contrary to or prejudicial to military, good order and military discipline. Lord, it is, it can be, uh, uh, there is a an imprisonment term. So, my Lord, I need to establish all that when I take your Lordships through that as to why, why do we want to, why do we need to criminalize this kind of conduct? Because today the message that has gone down is that insofar as the armed forces are concerned, now that 497 is off the statute books, it is regarded as... Ivan, you're when we talk about 497, it is based on gender, man or woman. Nothing to do with your official status. Correct, absolutely. Nothing to do with the official status. <laughs> now, this court tests on the anvil of the requirement of the constitution, reference to 497. It has nothing to do with your status, whether you're in army or in, in civil services or anywhere else. Correct. So, this is in the broader aspect. Yes. If you filter down, say sorry, in each persons who are serving in my organization are to be tested as per the provisions of this organization with respect to their conduct. Right. You will be right in saying, subject to what they say. But if you ask them, sorry, even if 497 has been struck down by this court, but as long as you are serving my institution, 497 will remain as a part no, of No, we that. are not it's saying that. We are not saying that at all. We are saying, yes, 33 there. 33 is the... we are not seeking to punish them, my lord, under section 497, the erstwhile provision. We cannot do that. That's off the statute book. All I'm showing your lordships is that it was a civil offense. It was on the statute book at the relevant time. We used to go under section 69 oftentimes in such cases. That's what I want to show your lordships. But today, there are other provisions on the statute book which are flexible enough uh, to cover such situations of various different kinds of either unbecoming conduct or a, a conduct which is contrary to military order and, and discipline. Please see, Malot, 69 first. 69. Yes, 69 first. Malot, I'm just try, trying to show your lordship the background that we went under 69 earlier. Now we are going under a different provision, okay. civil offenses. Lord, the army act. 
Amiak, Amiak. Civil offenses, your lordship might note, is a, uh, uh, defined exactly. under section 3 into brackets 2 of my lord's the same act. Civil offense means an offense which is triable by a criminal court. So, for instance, my lord, 497 was, it was a civil offense. Now, please see 69. Subject to the provisions of section 70, any person subject to this act who at any place in or beyond India commits any civil offense shall be deemed to be guilty of an offense against this act. And if charged therewith under this section shall be liable to be tried by a court martial and on conviction be punishable as follows. That is to say, if the offense is one which would be punishable under any law in force in India with death or with transportation, he shall be liable to suffer any punishment other than whipping so and so, so and so. In any other case, he shall be liable to suffer any punishment other than whipping assigned for the offense by the law in force in India or imprisonment for a term which may extend to seven years or such less punishment as in this act mentioned. Now, my lords, this was, my lords, it, it says shall which means that it was uh, uh, mandatory. But my lords, be that as it may, now that uh, uh, section 497 is off the statute books, we now look at my lords for 45 and 63. These are two provisions. Please take 45 and I will be my lords at a later stage dwelling a little bit on what this really means and what is the purpose of section 45. Please see 45 unbecoming conduct any officer this applies my lords to officers any officer junior commissioned officer or warrant officer who behaves in a manner unbecoming his position and the character expected of him shall on conviction by court martial if he is an officer be liable to be cashiered or to suffer such less punishment as in this act mentioned. And if he is a junior commissioned officer or a warrant officer, be liable to be dismissed or to suffer such less punishment as in this act mentioned. So 45 is one of the provisions under which we charge officers for what is regarded as unbecoming conduct or something, uh, um, my lords, which is out of line with the character which is expected of him. Miller, this is primarily because he's an officer. He, he or she would be required to display a certain standard of conduct which is more rigorous and exacting than an ordinary person. And therefore, that was the purpose. But I shall dwell on this also further a little more because I need to show that why are, why do these provisions exist? Why are they, Lord, in the in the the other side says that these are very vague provisions? It is required to be flexible, and I will point out why this flexibility is required. Well, let's please see further. 63, 63, violation of good order and discipline. Any person subject to this act who is guilty of any act or omission which though not specified in this act my lord please note this though which not specified in this act so as of today my lords 497 is not specified in this act adultery or a, 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 a extramarital affair may not be specifically mentioned in this act which though not specified in this act <clears throat> is prejudicial to good order and military discipline shall on conviction by court martial be liable to suffer imprisonment for a term which may extend seven years or such less punishment as in this act mentioned. Now, my lord, the other lesser punishments are, for example, you may lose your rank, you may be, uh, my lord, uh, uh, you may lose your position, etc., etc. So, there are many other lesser positions. But, my lord,